how one NIU student is getting by after a tornado destroyed her home. A man is charged with stealing tornado relief items in Fairdale, and we'll show you how DeKalb school students are going high tech in the classroom. NTC News Tonight starts right now. You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center. This is NTC News Tonight. We put you in the shoes of someone who lost their home from the tornado that struck Fairdale. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Budvillis. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Christina Lind. NTC reporter Karina Parada tells us about one NIU's student's experience in the tornado and how she's coping with its aftermath. This is all that remains of Fairdale, Illinois after a tornado hit Thursday night. I'm here with Sarah Lynn Bassett who is picking up the last final things with her boyfriend Josh. Sarah Lynn Bassett was not counting on being in the tornado. She and her boyfriend decided to go into a closet in the basement just as a safety precaution. Minutes after heading in the closet, the couple felt it was safe to go upstairs and were not expecting what they saw. I honestly didn't know. I just, there was just a lot of pressure. There was, people say it sounded like a freight train, but to us, our, it felt like our ears were going to pop. So I, he just looked at me and said, once I open this door, there's going to be nothing left. As she looks around, it is hard for her to believe the place she spent so much time in is now destroyed. Most of the top floor and its roof is completely lost with one exception. For the most part, the kitchen still has its roof thanks to a coincidence. As you can see, the roof has completely collapsed. The only thing keeping the roof in this room together is that they placed a closet door between these cabinets so the cat could play. After seeing the damage upstairs, Sarah Lynn is grateful they had the basement as shelter. Out of fear, she wanted to stay down there as long as possible until she heard yelling down the street. All, all of a sudden I heard people running from the street saying, there's a gas leak, we have to go, we have to get out, get out, get out. And all we did was just, we walked all the way down Main Street until we couldn't anymore because the place was going to explode. There's people running in the street saying, don't light a cigarette, don't light a cigarette, you know. Although there hasn't been much calm after the storm, Sarah Lynn believes things are looking up for them. Thanks to the Kirkland Fire District and other organizations, they have received a lot of help. She is just happy she and her boyfriend Josh are okay. One thing that Josh told, said, said to me, which made me, you know, find a lot of hope was that, you know, he said, yes, we lost everything, but you and I walked out together and that's all we have. All we have is each other and that's, you know. Sarah Lynn says her and her boyfriend are a lot closer now and simply care about looking out for one another. For Sarah and Josh, all there's left to do is move forward. But for other residents, there's still questions that need to be answered. In Fairdale, Illinois, I'm Karina Parada, NTC News. Thanks, Karina. A Stillman Valley man faces looting charges after police say they found him stealing tornado relief supplies. Richard Birch was helping a family member clean up, the Fairdale, clean up after the Fairdale tornado when he was caught loading items into his vehicle. Police found about 35 storage tubs in his home including eight filled with donated items such as medicine, toiletries, and food. He's being held at DeKalb County Jail on a $50,000 bond. I guess I'm not surprised that someone would take advantage uh, of the situation. Uh, it's, it's a sad day when someone does that, but uh, you know, we, uh, we got on it real quick. It was good of the residents to come to us and alert us to it. Three local residents faced drug charges after being busted for heroin over the weekend. DeKalb Police arrested 26-year-old Kyle Davis, 22-year-old Jacob McMurray, and 20-year-old Brittany Grubbs after receiving reports of drug activity in this home on Glidden Avenue. Police say they recovered hypodermic syringes, plastic bags, and spoons that contain heroin residue. The three were charged with a felony drug possession and could face prison time. The Sycamore City Council has approved a special use permit for a medical marijuana dispensary. The dispensary is proceeding with its request to the state of Illinois to be granted permission to operate in the district surrounding DeKalb County. If approved, it will be open seven days a week. It will be strictly a retail operation, no actual growing pot, and only two and a half ounces can be sold in a 14-day period. Sycamore Mayor Ken Mundy says a dispensary will not harm the community. Uh, none of this is consumed on, on, on premises or anything, they, and, and they're limited. Uh, 
per month or per every two weeks on, on a sm relatively small amount. So it's not going to be like someone is going to procure a lot of this and then go out and sell it on the street. Uh, that won't. Legislation extending Illinois' medical marijuana program beyond 2017 has passed the Illinois House despite some recent opposition from Governor Bruce Rauner. The bill will extend the program four years from when the first dispensary begins officially operating. The Sycamore City Council has also approved a $57 million budget without raising taxes. The city has been able to use financial reserves to do it. This will be the sixth year that the city's property tax has not increased. New laptops are coming in and District 428 couldn't be happier. This is a result of DeKalb's school district approving a deal worth several millions of dollars so that every staff member and student can have their own laptop. The 8th graders at Clinton Rosette Middle School are enjoying testing out their new Google Chromebooks. Teachers will let the children go on the computers when researching on a project for language arts, doing projects for math, and taking a quiz for science. Faculty and teachers are happy that the district is moving forward with this $4.5 million plan. Not only are the students learning those 21st century skills of all the different technology and apps and things like that, um, but also they're not having to carry around math books and language arts books because it's now all digitalized. Since everything is becoming more digitalized, students can only access sites that are school related. This new plan will help students that may not have a working computer at home. Each student will receive their own Chromebook and a case to go with it. And it's just easy to put it in as one, two, and three. Although students can bring these computers home with them, they are limited to what websites they can go on. So parents don't have to be concerned about what websites their children are looking at. Um, we set guidelines in the classroom and, and the teachers are really good about monitoring it and after the first couple of weeks of being really new and exciting the kids have been able to um, kind of regulate themselves and um, and learn some of that self-discipline. Since the students will have access to their own Chromebooks faculty members are hopeful that it will enhance their learning. Kids enjoy the, the different choices that they're allowed um, now that they have technology and now there's different multimedia sources that they can use, the teacher like offering different choices for projects and presentations and things like that. While the tech plan was a success, faculty and students are now looking forward to this tech-savvy future. In DeKalb, Christina Lind, NTC News. The technology plan will start this upcoming school year. A Rockford logistics firm has won more than a billion dollars in work for the U.S. military to take place over the next five years. Supply Corps provides supplies and services for the military and civilian agencies in the, US, in the South Central U.S. The Husky Pups have returned, and the shuttle line is making some new stops thanks to the student feedback. NTC reporter Ryan Mack shows us the excitement on the first day the Pups came back. This is the spring debut of the Husky Pups, a group of electric shuttles at NIU. In the past few months, the pups were nowhere to be seen. The winter kept them from being used. But now that it's warm again, it's the perfect time to get the pups out for a test drive. And where better a place to do it than this year's Communiversity Block Party? Now the pups have new routes. The latest change takes into account input from students at the Student Association's recent focus groups. The groups are specifically held to get feedback from NIU students about the Husky bus lines. Naturally, the Husky pups came up. So we just went with the flow. We, we started talking about Husky pups and what they wanted. And so students definitely did put a lot of input into the routes that we have right now. The Husky Pups will now go all over campus, and the new routes show where students need transportation the most. A lot of the people that went to the, the focus group were coming from the residence halls. So there was definitely a need and a desire to have it go from the residence halls into campus. Many aspects of the Husky Pups make them perfect for college students. One of the key features of the Husky Pup is the fact that you can hop on and hop off. Another quality is their ability to drive on sidewalks, like the one outside DuSable Hall. For the future, the focus groups will continue to be a key factor for the Husky Pups. 
you know, but we really want to get the feedback from the campus. Uh, that's going to dictate how they're going to be used. We believe that they're going to serve a very significant role. The pups will be running regularly for the rest of the year. In DeKalb for NTC News, I'm Ryan Mack. Today is a good day to actually take the Husky pup. I saw some snow falling on my way over here. Speaking of the weather, it's now time to check in with our own Emery Danes for the weather. So we've been seeing a lot of winds and stuff these past couple of days. Will we see calmer weather anytime soon? Well, for Thursday, we're still going to see these winds a little bit less than today, but we will have some sunshine coming up. So let's take a look at tomorrow's temperatures. For Thursday, we'll see sunny conditions across the area and temperatures generally in the 50s, but it will be windy, so it'll feel a little bit chillier than that. To hear more about our extended weather forecast, stay with us. You're watching NTC News Tonight. Welcome back everyone. I know you're probably all sick of those clouds and high winds we've experienced the last couple of days, but we have good news. They'll be moving past relatively soon. So today we only saw a high of about 48 degrees, much below our normal for this time of year. It's very chilly out there, especially with those winds. I just wanted to bundle up and like they said, I even saw some snowflakes on my way from class as well. We weren't really expecting that. So today we did see those clouds pushing through. We had winds gusting to 29 miles per hour, making it feel as if it's only 32 degrees outside. But the good news is we do have a high pressure system moving towards our area and we have high pressure systems. Those cause sinking air, which will bring us clear skies. So tonight we'll see clear skies. And as we go into Thursday morning, that high pressure will stay around that area as same through Thursday and into Thursday night again. So Thursday be nice and sunny and then into Friday that system will move off and then the next thing we want to note is coming up for this weekend so this low will start moving towards our area and possibly bring some rainfall with it on Saturday. So let's take it back to tonight where we'll see mostly clear conditions. We do have a chance of frost after 4 a.m. because our temperatures overnight are below freezing and we still do have those windy conditions gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So it'll be very cold out tonight. If you have to go out, make sure you bring a jacket. Now for Thursday, like we said, it will be very sunny. We do have that chance of frost in the morning. We'll have temperatures near 53 degrees and those winds are dying down a little bit. 20 miles per hour, much better than the gusts we've seen the past couple of days, but it'll still make it feel a little bit chillier, but that sunshine is very much welcome. Then on Thursday night, clear skies again, high, uh, an overnight low of 32 degrees. And with that temperature hovering around freezing, we will see another chance of frost and finally, those winds are decreasing down to 5 to 15 miles per hour, which is more of what we're used to, so we're definitely thankful for that. Now let's take a look at our five-day weather forecast. Again, on Thursday, we do have that sunshine high of about 53. However, it will be windy. Then going into Friday, up near 60 degrees with partly, partly sunny skies. Should be nice out there. But Saturday, as that low pressure comes towards our area, we do have a chance of rain high of only 49 degrees. But as we move into the weekend, uh, more into the weekend on Sunday we have a high of 57 should be pretty sunny and then even warmer 58 on Monday with a slight chance of rain so hopefully that upward trend and temperature continues throughout the rest of next week that's all for weather let's send it back to the desk thanks Emery on bad weather days and I use outdoor sports have a hard time playing or practicing 
TJ Hopkins shows us how the Chick Evans Fieldhouse is getting a major facelift that will help keep outdoor sports out of harsh conditions. The NIU men's tennis team is hard at work, practicing on a cold and chilly day. On days when the weather is bad or questionable, the team wouldn't be outside. Normally, they would have to drive to the Vaughn Tennis Center in Aurora. The problem with that is it takes 30 minutes to get there, sometimes longer. That means players have to rush from class just to get to practice on time. By the end of March, rushing to practice will no longer be an issue. I am in the Chick Evans Fieldhouse where there's normally two basketball courts right behind me. But in the next upcoming weeks, there will be some new courts. Three new indoor tennis courts. Two on this one and one right behind it. The new indoor tennis courts will only be used for practice because the field house is used for other purposes. And with the team's recent success, even though it is not their own facility, many feel it is a step in the right direction. Well, it's something that uh, you know we've obviously been, been wanting for a while, and uh, it's finally coming to uh, fruition, which is great. Um, you know, considering what we've been able to accomplish with the resources and facilities we have compared to everyone else in the league, you know, we, we've accomplished some amazing things. By creating the new courts, time is no longer a concern for coaches or players. The long four and five hour time slots are no longer an issue. Players are relieved that they don't have to drive or go far just to go to practice. We're not gonna waste time. Uh, like in 10 minutes, we're gonna be able to practice and because we're always wasting almost two hours, you know, like in the car every day. So it's just time consuming, so. Although bad weather has delayed the installation a little bit, the courts are almost finished. The lines are up, and the only thing that is missing are the nets. With NTC News, I'm TJ Hopkins. Coach Fisher hopes the new courts will also help bring in new recruits. Coming up, how NIU students can relieve stress while learning about other cultures. You're watching NTC News Tonight. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. NIU students are facing a lot of stress as the end of the spring semester comes closer. Krista Kesson joins us now to talk about how NIU's Anthropology Museum is helping students relieve their stress. Thank you for being with us today, Krista. Thank you. Yes, of course. So the first De-Stress Fest was held last spring. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about how the idea came about? Sure. So the Student Advocacy Board at the Anthropology Museum at NIU started in January 2014. So because we started um, in the middle of an academic year, we thought we'd like to kick off our board and show off the board to NIU in a big way. So what can students expect from this year's De-Stress Fest? Sure, so this year's different because we're bringing in two new student groups. Um, we're bringing in the Robotics Club and the Geography Club. So this year, students can expect to see um, robots and be able to demonstrate a few um, robots with the Robotics Club's robots. And then also, um, students can um, play a geocaching game with the Geography Club. So this event wasn't held last fall, but are there plans to host one this upcoming semester? Or um, We plan on keeping this event um, a spring semester event only um, because in the fall we support the Anthropology Museum's um, exhibit openings and um, other events that the museum puts on in the fall. So for any students who aren't able to make it to the de-stress 
Fest next week. Is there anything that they can do to help relieve the stress with finals coming up soon? Sure. My favorite technique is coloring. Um, we will have um, a few of the coloring sheets put up on our Facebook page um, so students can access that uh, via Facebook. Um, and we, we, also, um, we also really like meditation. So. Great. Well, if you can't make it out to the De-Stress Fest, the event will be held throughout the next the, the, throughout the day in Cole Hall next Tuesday. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us, Krista. Thank you guys so much. The U.S. Navy is heading to Yemen. And survivors are still being rescued after their ship capsized in the Mediterranean Sea. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. Italian forces continue to rescue migrants from boats off their coast. More than 500 survivors began arriving on several Italian islands. The Italian Prime Minister has called on the rest of the European Union to address the crisis. U.S. warships are being deployed to the waters off Yemen to monitor ships in the area traveling from Iran. Tehran is suspected of supporting rebels in Yemen. I Iran insists the fleet is operating legally. Ousted Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi has been sentenced to 20 years in prison on charges of inciting violence and facilitating the killing and torturing of protesters in 2012. Morsi was disposed by a military coup in 2013. The Justice Department says it's now officially looking into the death of Freddie Gray, the Baltimore man who died of injuries and he suffered while in police custody. The man and police claim Gray was using his legs when he was taken to a police van. Witnesses say they saw something rougher. Gray died of a severe spinal cord injury. And that's today's World Watch. It's time for NTC Sports. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Kenny. Right before we get to the baseball diamond and the hockey rink, let's point our attention to a certain sport who doesn't always receive the recognition it should for being a sport. You don't always have to look towards the field or the court for that matter to spot out the athletes. Next time you attend an NIU game, take a look at the sidelines. Being an athlete, you have to face challenges pretty regularly, but for one NIU cheerleader, he overcame the challenges of being an athlete and also overcoming social stigmas. Cheerleading is passion, teamwork, um, individuality, having fun, creativity, and death. <laughs> My name is Luke Wachaki. I go to Northern Illinois University and I am 21. I am in the athletic training program here and I'm an NIU cheerleader. cheerleading since my sophomore year. I needed something to do that would prepare me and like keep me active during not off season for gymnastics so that's why I chose cheerleading. There actually wasn't any male cheerleaders. I was like the first one in a long time. Right when I started it was like right away everyone was saying names, everyone was calling me gay, everyone was like you're committing social suicide and then when people actually started to see like what I was doing and what how I was doing things and it just kind of grew from there and then the res respect towards me kind of grew when the guy more guys started joining as well and then going through high school it kind of toned down and then being in college no one really cares. I was in band as well so I used to bounce between band and cheerleading during mm -hmm. football games and my best friends um, in band used to call me a robot. They're like oh you're going to the robots? Oh you're going to the robots? It's like why are you calling them robots? Like that doesn't even make sense to me. They're like oh they're, they just they, they tag me as like the stereotypical cheerleader. Getting on the field and everyone's like oh like there's a male cheerleader like, what's going on? But like going to competitions it was a complete flip-flop. Just being a male cheerleader it's the typical like oh, he's gay, like, oh, he's very flamboyant, like, oh, he's just out there. Like, that's not, like, how it is. Cheerleading, to me, means a place to just get away from a lot of different things in life. I come here, I see my best friends, and I get everything out. And it's, there's, there's never a dull moment in cheerleading. This sto story came from NTC reporter Jessica Caffel. It was a late night for the Blackhawks fans as they took on the Predators in a crucial Game 4. Scott Darling is in the net again as the Blackhawks look to go up 3-1. to 
This game's all tied up at one, and Matt McCollin sneaks a puck past three, count three defenders, and James Neal's wrister finds a home. In the third period, Marion Hosa sets the table for Brandon Sada, and he zings the puck into the back of the goal. This game was destined for overtime, and the Hawks have a chance to win it here, but Pekka Renee's instincts were on fleek as he makes this gnarly glove save. It's past 1 o'clock central time, and three overtimes is enough as Brent Seabrook sends the fans home happy. Bedtimes were missed, yes, but the Blackhawks got the win. Today was one of those mornings where Blackhawk fans had to hit the snooze button a few times on their alarm clock before they were ready to start their day. In other Chicago sports news, the Cubbies were in action last night as they took on the Pittsburgh Pirates. The game came down to some late inning heroics. Let's check it out. The game's all squared up at five and the bases are packed with Pirates. Jung Ho Kung says, ha, bang, as he smacks this ball into deep center field and puts the Pirates up by three. Let me take you to the ninth inning where the bases are loaded. Starling Castro slaps the chopper over the third baseman's head and ties the game up at eight apiece. Later that inning, this may look like a typical ground out to you, but this is the go-ahead run that Willington Castillo knocks in. Cubs go on and win 9-8. The Illinois High School Association is expected to vote in June on new rules that would limit the amount of full contact practice allowed for high school football teams. The IHSA says its board of directors discussed the proposals Tuesday and now will seek feedback before voting. The plan would limit teams to three days of live contact practices a week. That's all the time we have for NTC Sports. Thanks for tuning in and have a great rest of your week. Coming up, how one local farm beat the odds and kept their business open. We'll explain. You're watching NTC News Tonight. A Maple Park farm has managed to provide the area with fresh grown produce for 50 years. NTC reporter Amber Luckett has more on how the Wilsey farm has overcome agricultural changes. Working side by side, the Wilsey sisters are preparing to open their family's farm for the summer. The Wilsey farm is located in Maple Park and has been there since 1965. In fact, this farm was built during a time when a lot of farms were going out of business because most farmers were going off to war. And even to this day, a lot of family-owned farms continue to suffer because of major changes in agriculture. Farms, even 20 years ago or 25 years ago, had, had they, they raised beef, they raised hogs, they raised dairy, and then they had their garden and stuff like that. Today, you just it's just a lot more of a... a what's called conventional crops, corn and beans. But despite history and the many changes that have occurred today, the Wilsey family has managed to stick around. And although they are no longer raising livestock, they have expanded their farm by building four greenhouses that hold a variety of herbs, vegetables, and even flowers. Along with selling their products here in the summertime, they have also managed to team up with the local hy V, where many people look forward to purchasing their vegetables. They deliver every day. Anytime we need something, they're there. It's a great, great, great partnership we have. It's always something to look forward to every year is, is having their homegrown stuff here at Hy-Vee. And although a lot of people don't see the hard work that goes into the farm, one of the daughters says that without her mother, none of this would be possible. I think our moms taught us a lot because, um, you know, um, things weren't always easy. We always joke that it's kind of got to be in your blood to be in this kind of work because who would want to work this hard, but we enjoy it. Um, you know, it's nice to see um, the finished product and people, you know, buying it and enjoying it. And to celebrate their 50th year anniversary, the Wilsey Farm also plans on hosting a couple of special events throughout the season. This is Amber Luckett in Maple Park, NTC News. It's great to see how much of an attraction locally grown food is at supermarkets. Mm -hmm. NTC News Tonight is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. We want to thank you all for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back on Monday. Goodbye, everyone.